Good morning and welcome to the Worship of God with McClure United Church this morning. Today we continue our journey into the wilderness of Lent. It was in the wilderness that Jesus was shaped and formed for his ministry and through this wilderness time we are invited to journey with Jesus as he lives out his ministry. We journey with Jesus, we journey with each other, knowing that God's love is with us every step of the way. And it is because of God's love and our desire to share that love that we remind everyone at the beginning of each service of our commitment as an affirming ministry in the United Church to do our very best to not only welcome but also to just celebrate the beautiful diversity of God's people. No matter your age, class, ability, race, gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation, we are grateful, so grateful that you have joined us for worship today. And of course we are worshiping here in Saskatoon on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis Nation. And it's important for us to take a moment to acknowledge and offer respect to the ancestors and keepers of this land. So I do have a few really important announcements to share with you this morning. They're always important, but you can find all of them on the weekly email, the website, the Facebook page. So just go there if you need contact information or if you want to find out how to register for something, please check it out. And if you can't find the information anywhere, then feel free to contact me. So the first announcement is of an interfaith gathering that will be happening today from 1 to 3 p.m. This is going to be an amazing event with speakers from Scotland, Poland, Canada, the United States, Sweden. And there will be people there from a variety of different Christian and interfaith traditions. There will be a panel discussion followed by a time for questions and answers. So I do hope that you are able to join us again. That's today from 1 to 3 p.m. And also I wanted to talk to you about Practically Prophetic. This is a webinar series offered by Ruth Moreau um, and that is going to be valuable information about the basic facts of grief and depression and anxiety, uh, self-help strategies both for ourselves and how to support others. And so these are happening on Monday, March the 8th and March the 15th, both Mondays at 7 p.m. And then we are still into our Lenten um, book study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. as well as the Wednesday noon Bible study which has been fabulous. There's been around 35 people gathering each week to talk about the Bible stories for the upcoming weekend and it has been a fantastic conversation every time I've been there. So I do hope that you'll come and check it out. And also just a reminder of the Friday Connections time, also through Zoom, Fridays at 10 a.m., small group of folks gathering each week to check in with each other and see how we are doing. It's good to be together in whatever way we are able. So there's probably more. We are a busy church. Pandemic has not been able to stop the fantastic activity of those who are part of our congregation. So if you also have ideas or suggestions for things that we could be doing over the next few months, please reach out and let us know. Um, you might get invited to help with something, but that is also such a gift. So um, please just be in touch and let us know if you have any ideas, suggestion, suggestions, uh, concerns, comments, anything, so that we can make this church experience in a pandemic the best that we can possibly make it. All right, so now let's just breathe deeply and ground ourselves as we prepare our hearts and our minds for this time of worship. Simply to be, to be in stillness, simply to trust that God is here, simply Just 
All are welcome here, the young and old, those who have visions and those who dream dreams, the sinner and saint, those who seek forgiveness and those who long for peace, the hurt and the doubting, those who know the wilderness and those who feel lost. All are welcome here, for you are loved by God. And we light this candle as a reminder of all this. Let us pray. God, we give you our hearts, hearts that are full of gratitude for this journey and for your presence with us. Our hearts at times are also saturated with fear, but we give them to you anyway. You promise to love us as we are, you promised to walk with us to the ends of the earth. So in this moment, we promise to tell the truth. God, you ask us to be brave and bold, but we cower in fear. You ask us to love our neighbors as ourselves, but we hold tight to privilege and the status quo. And you ask us to risk it all to follow you but we are content with the injustices at hand. May we be grounded in your presence, inspired by your wisdom, and open to the truth of your forgiveness of our sins as we settle our hearts on you. Gratefully we pray. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of John. Now there is a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, and that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave to his only Son, so everyone who believes in him may not perish and may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send him, the Son, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. May God bless our understanding these words from Scripture. So I'm a planner, a list maker, in fact, my favorite iPhone app is my task manager. I used to have a desk covered with sticky notes and lists, but now they're all kept together in my iPhone. And so not only am I organized, I'm also tidy. And that oddly helps me to feel very safe and secure. Now don't get me wrong, I have perfected the art of procrastination. In fact, I was about an hour behind writing the sermon for today because I was busy posting photos of my cats on Facebook. So what I'm saying is that I thrive in structure. I need to know where I am and what I need to do or where I'm going. But my structure is pretty flexible and there's lots of room for movement. Unless, of course, I'm overstressed or overtired or anxious. And that's when I my structure becomes more firm and inflexible when I need to have more control over my environment and everybody in my environment too. So yeah, living in a pandemic has been an interesting experience. I've had to resist my urge to do long-term planning because who knows what's going to happen in the long term. Do I renew my Zoom subscription for another year or do I switch to a month-by-month -month payment plan? Do I start planning in for in-person worship for Easter, for fall, for January 2022? I haven't even created a permanent home office space yet. I've just decorated this little corner of my house with paper and wilderness things so that it looks good in front of the camera. Years and years ago, 1993 to be exact, I joined a 12-step group and learned that the number one strategy for living a life free of constant fear and anxiety was living one day at a time. The phrase just for today was my constant companion. I can handle almost anything for a day if I'm allowing myself to be fully present in today. I'm not wasting time fretting about a tomorrow that may never even happen anyway. Makes sense, right? And today, right here, today is where God lives. Right now, in this moment, God is here. 
and that's where I want to be. This brings me a lot of comfort. It allows me to live within a structure that is bendy and flexible, and perhaps a structure that is even willing to be torn down and rebuilt if it makes sense to do that. Now, let me tell you, I didn't get to this place of comfort quickly or easily, or by no means do I stay here all of the time. I can move right into a structure that is made firmly of concrete and steel in a flash, and often I don't even know I've moved. I returned to church around the same time I started going to the 12-step program. It wasn't the United Church, it was another denomination. I was invited by a friend of mine. So I went and I met with the pastor and I poured my heart out to him and he prayed with me and told me that I could be reborn into a new life with Christ. I had absolutely no idea what that meant or what would be required of me, but I was a bit desperate. So I said, yeah, sure. And I signed this little booklet and that date, January 23rd, 1993, was my new birth date. That's what the pastor told me. And I honestly believe that from that point on, I was leaving behind all the things I disliked about myself. I wasn't going to be angry or jealous or anxious or struggling with addiction anymore. He told me that my prayers had been answered and that I was now a new creation in Christ. Oh, I needed to hear that. I felt so pure. And that lasted for about a minute until some regular ordinary thing happened and I got annoyed and my old angry feelings bubbled up and dang it, the prayer didn't work. I was still the same. So I decided that I needed to learn more about the Bible, that if I studied hard and did everything I thought I was supposed to do, then I could really be reborn. But then I actually started reading the Bible. And the pastor told me to start at the beginning and read for an hour every day. Well, the creation story, that was nice. I liked that. And Adam and Eve, they had a couple of sons. That was nice. But wait, where did their wives come from? Well, I briefly pushed that thought out of my head. And then, of course, right after the creation story comes Noah and the Great Flood, a story I remembered from Sunday school as being a sweet story about God saving a bunch of animals and making a beautiful rainbow. Have you ever read that story? My goodness. Well, I started a list of questions, and after about a week, I called the pastor with my list of questions and was told that I needed to just trust in God, that I needed to pray about it. Well, the rest of the story is a long one of me searching for answers that never seemed available and feeling frustrated and somewhat desperate as I tried to figure out how I was supposed to know what to believe when no one was giving me any clear answers. So I felt for Nicodemus in the scripture reading for today. He came to Jesus for answers. Hey Jesus, I know you're a teacher from God, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do all of these amazing things. Who are you? And Jesus, as usual, didn't answer the question. Instead, he started talking about being born again or being born from above. And Nicodemus was like, what do you mean born again? And asked if he was supposed to re-enter his mother's womb so that she could give birth to him again. Jesus said, that's not what I mean and explained about being born of the Spirit and how we have to have a spiritual rebirth, one that changes us. Nicodemus didn't know this at the time, but he was in the midst of a second birth and was having birth pangs brought about by a curiosity that he just couldn't ignore any longer. He was being changed. So you know the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Well, I have one cat who is especially curious, and I pray for him every day. But curiosity, while generally bad for cats, is actually really good for us 
especially for our spiritual lives. Asking questions is a sign of deep faith. We get curious, and when we do, we sometimes have these encounters with God's love and God's grace. And we wrestle and we grapple. We try to work out who we think Jesus is and what that means for our lives. And that work doesn't go quickly or end in a neat and tidy fashion. But I discovered that over time, it does become more comfortable. Well, maybe not, maybe not comfortable so much as not so scary. And not just that, but necessary, necessary for our spiritual growth. I've discovered that spiritual contentment does not come from having the answers. It comes from being okay with all the questions. It's becoming more comfortable in the wilderness of unknowing and mystery. I understand being born again very different from how I understood it in 1993. It's not a one-time event when the old suddenly is gone and the new has magically appeared. It's a gradual yet continuous birthing. We are living lives of change and if we're going to do more than survive in the wilderness, if we're wanting to thrive, to live abundantly in this time and space, we must allow ourselves to be curious, to ask more questions. While I'm grateful that my physical home is solid and unmovable, I'm equally as grateful that my internal home has become more flexible. It has walls that can be moved or even torn down temporarily or permanently. My challenge, and I don't think I'm the only one with this challenge, is to maintain the internal flexibility necessary to live a life of faith, even in the wilderness times, even in the pandemic times, the sick times, the grieving times, the lonely times, the chaotic times. And yet, to also trust that if we suddenly find ourselves surrounded once again by concrete and steel, it's okay. It's our structure and we have the power to transform it. And we don't need to do it all at once, one day at a time, one step at a time, one breath at a time. And it helps, it really, really helps to remember that we do not do it alone. We never, ever need to do it alone. Thanks be to God.
our prayers today are based on a passage from Psalm 119. It's familiar, I'm sure that many of you will have heard it. It says, The word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So let's gather our hearts and minds together and offer ourselves to God in prayer. God, your word which called this world into existence, brought order out of chaos and beauty out of the formless, has infused the very air we breathe with the precious scent of your love. This word is the light by which our journey is illuminated, the light by which we see the beauty of this world, and the light we pass to those who would join us traveling in the joy of your company. God, your love extends to the boundaries of the universe, yet is focused on humankind, weak, sinful, helpless, blown this way and that way, individuals who you count as your children, wanting nothing more than to welcome us into your arms. God, your love extends to the boundaries of humankind, to rich and poor, have and have-nots, oppressor and oppressed, thief and victim, for we are all less than perfect and all in need of your forgiveness. We pray for all your children, wherever they may be, in their joy and sorrow, fear and loathing, pain and suffering, that your word might comfort, your love heal and restore. God, your love breaks through, demands to be noticed, exposes that which has been hidden, reveals the truth that has been concealed within the heart. We pray for those who exploit the poor, those whose business is slavery or persecution, and those who hold power over life or death. We pray that your word, your love, might bring change and bring light into hearts darkened by sin. God, your love has influence wherever it is shown a shoulder to lean on, a willing ear to listen, a task performed, a gift given, a selfless act. We pray for politicians and leaders, all those in positions of authority who also walk with you in your company. God, your love has influence wherever it is shown, a shoulder to lean on, a willing ear to listen, a task performed, a gift given, a selfless act. We pray for politicians and leaders, all those in positions of authority who also walk within your company. May they show your love and share your word through their actions and service, and may they and those they serve be blessed. May your word, O oh God, be a lamp to our feet and a light for our paths. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, friends, as we continue our journey into the wilderness, 
May we be comforted and encouraged by the truth that we never journey alone. We are held in the tender and abundant love of God. Christ is with us, strengthening us for those times of struggle. And the Spirit is guiding us every step of the way. Amen. Thank you.